pretty sure this is going to be my last article after math that I'm in my parents' house. Um, my parents' house is weird. Like, there's an eight-foot painting of just flowers. It's just vases of flowers behind me. Like, it keeps going. I It's it's weird. Uh, I also, there's a live board cut out of Elvis over there. Yeah, that's, that's normal. Um, anyway, so today I'll be doing article aftermath number four. Uh, under the radar, heretic monarchs. Um, I think this is the definition of under the radar because I, I'm, I like mashups. Um, I also like covers of music, but I, I, I like mashups of music the best and uh, decks as well. Um, heretic monarchs, heretics kill your opponent in one turn. Monarchs don't kill your opponent in 47 turns. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember winning with monarchs. Like I remember I played it at nationals one year, but ooh. um, yeah, I lost to Frog FDK a lot that Nationals. Also, I lost to I lost to like one GB and like fourteen Frog FDKs. That was that was fun. Anyway, the basis of this deck is, uh, I guess it's a little mis misleading in Heretic Monarchs. I initially had more of the Heretic stuff in here, like F Bet and Nef 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 Bet. I can't say those words. Um, I had two of each of those. But then it really, and then I was like, well, I might as well run a Galaxy Serpent. And then my extra deck was just tighter than anything else. And then my main deck was also tighter than everything else. And the Monarchs weren't nearly as effective. Be They just weren't. Um, like, that's not bad. But then I also wanted to run a Curse of Dragon and Volcasaurus and rank fives and level seven synchros and level eight synchros. And I, and I was like, oh, I have to run a Red Eyes now. So that just really kind of corrupted the core of the deck. I mean, the core of the deck is like Summon Tef, New Attribute for Thestalos, but I digress. Yeah, um, as I talked about here, my favorite card in the extra deck is Hazy Flame Basil Trice. Uh, the Japanese name is like Hazy Flame Fire Penis or something. I don't remember what it is, but uh, it's something along those lines. Or like, well, this is about, maybe it's like, like, Firecock. I like Fire Penis better. Um, apparently it's cheap. You can buy it for like 13 cents. Well, that's cool. I'm not going to spend 13 cents, so I have to pay for $5 in shipping. I have like seven of them somewhere. I just don't want to go find them right now. Um, so I'll look at the comments first. Um, they were actually all pretty positive. I'm actually surprised that it wasn't a little more... Maybe it was because over the New Year's. I've been... This, uh, this deck, I've been like hyping... Just hyping myself like... It's just a random conversation, like at Christmas. Like, I just randomly say, did someone say Heretic Monarchs? And my grandparents and my grandma would be like, just open your present. But she doesn't talk as snarkily as I just imitated there. But, um, yeah. Uh, the only comment I didn't really address, because I didn't really... I don't like getting in comment wars with people. Um, I didn't include Treeborn simply because I didn't want to take out more stuff. And as a one of... I knew I wouldn't really see it that often. Um, I could. I really wanted to put in two tr swap frogs, or maybe even a f maybe a f foolish would probably be better than the swap frogs. The pitch is malicious. Hell, Tyrone. Like if you don't want to, some you wouldn't. Don't do that. Bad idea. Um, and then so that's why I didn't. <clears throat> I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Maybe I should try it out. I tried it out for like two seconds, and it was just never useful because, like with Ptolemy. It, three now, which is one of the best cards in the deck, and Tefnuit at three, and three Heretic Seals, like, you always had Tefnuit plays, and so, like, you had to be scraping the bottom of the barrel if you needed to, tri especially with things like Soul Exchange and Tefnuit, and, um, uh, like, you really had to be scraping the bottom of the barrel to get, uh, to need a tribute Treeborn for Monarch. I mean, there's only, like, six Monarchs in here, right? Uh, I think three Thistol- oh, I didn't mean to go back. Yeah, it's like three Thestalos, oh, seven, uh, three Caius and one Ryza. Um, it was just never really came up. Um, I mean, with Battle Fader, and then I could have trip. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, if you feel more comfortable playing it, and you, I guess it does. It's defense, worst case scenario. But then you can't summon Tefnut if you have a Treeborn on the field. Sometimes you have to make decisions, and then you can't card card D if you Treeborn back. Not that that's really relevant. I, I just wasn't the big, biggest fan of it. Um, like, if you can go find... I actually had to buy Tyrone's. Um, oh, I found one, but um, 
I had to go buy one, and that was it. And the guy charged me like a dollar seventy. I was like, dude, this is the most. I mean, I just did not pay a dollar seventy. That's how the story ended. Um, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, that's. Oh, that's what I. That's what. The, that's why I started talking about Tyrone because or Tyrone number two. Um, I actually wanted to play two. Um, there's a rule of thumb that you shouldn't play two of the same normals for change disappearance. That used to be big, I think, around Mermails and Dino Rabbit, I think, and Zectors. That basically from like last Nationals to or like 2012 Nationals to around 2013 Nationals, there were like six de like spell books. There were like six decks that like a normal summon with a thousand or less attack was really good. Um, why Mermails now that I think about that? I don't think... Why is... Why would you play against Mermails? Well, Spellbooks is for Blue Boy. Uh, and Zectors is for Dragonfly. Dragonfly. I know that's... I guess that's only one. But that's what I was saying. Last year, Nationals. Uh, Dino Rabbit. I think that you played it against Rabbit. Point being, Chain Disappearance was, was a side deck card. And if they popped both of your normal monsters, you didn't have nearly as many plays. So you should play two. I don't think that's really going to be prevalent anymore at all. No one's going to be playing Chain Disappearance. And um, so that's why I'm comfortable running two of the same one. Uh, also, that means I have to open my binder and pull out a Watt Tail Dragon, and that's hard. Um, secondly, I'd much rather summon one from my deck so I don't draw it later on. And there's sometimes you draw one of the Tyrones, and so you want to summon, tr summon the other Tyrone from your deck when you tribute a Tefnuit or a Sue. And I guess you could summon it from your hand, but I'm willing I'm willing to take the 800 attack point drop so that I always will have a... Well, always will have a Tyhone in my deck that I can summon instead of if I want to go into Hazy Flame Basil Trice to summon it from my hand. The probabilities are... I ran, it, I ran them when I made this deck. They're, it's like insignificantly different. I, it will not affect the outcome... Ver, I, it will barely ever affect the outcome. Like, literally, like, one in, like, 417,000 times or something will the Wattail Dragon be slightly more useful than um, Taiho number two. Like, that's really ridiculous, Lil. I, so that's why I don't care. Um, um, I talked about the Treeborn Frog. talked about the Taiho. Um, I think... I, I, I probably discussed... Yeah, I did talk about uh, Constellar Ptolemy. M7. That card's $25 again, because it went to 3 I think that card's $25. Maybe it's even more now. But I guess the problem with that card in this deck is it's pretty... No wow. Wow. It's it's almost... <laughs> it is almost $40. People, you do not need these cards. I need them. I need all of them. It's... Why is this card so much? Oh, right. It's really good. Yeah, you need... I highly recommend running three, but the problem is I picked up one for eight the other day, and I was like, gee, I got a good deal. It's like $14. But now it's apparently like almost $40, which is ridiculous. So, that sucks. Um, Zach Buckley and I were talking about, uh, he jokingly said, hey, I should do Heretic Monarchs, and I jokingly slash not jokingly at all said back to him, you can't because M7's really expensive. That's after I found out the, I knew, well, it's a little bit more, even when I thought it was like $15, I was like, well, one of the biggest components of your extra deck, not even necessarily the most, yeah, three cards take up $50, basically, which is half of your budget, that's terrible, so... Uh, this is bio this is not a budget deck because uh, you definitely need multiple M7s. I was gonna play it at a regional this weekend and beat everyone and it'd be cool like that, but uh, I only have one M7. So yeah. Uh, in terms of matchups, I didn't really discuss the matchups in this deck that well. Um uh, against something like Fire Fist, I mean I guess you could say it sucks because I mean, they could just bear away whatever card it is and attack directly. Um, they'll get they can get a lot of searches off, but I mean, you have things like Photon Strike Bouncer, etc. Against Mermails, I actually really like this deck against Mermails. Like that's one of my main motivations for playing Enemy Control. Or summon Tefnuit, tribute Tefnuit to take their uh, Gaios because they're like, ha, your effects don't work on me. And I'm like, no. I mean, Enemy Control is half the reason you play, and you tribute their Gaios for probably a Thestalos or whatever you want. 
Um, uh, against spellbooks, I, I everything has a bad spellbook matchup. Um, except Dragon's last format somehow. I, I mean, because of Ravine, but um, I, I wouldn't. I mean, this deck's good. I mean, actually, has some. It doesn't have a bad Bujin matchup. And the more I thought about it, post writing the article, the more I thought you should actually add Wingbeat of Giant Dragon. I know that basically your only targets are Tefnuit, but considering the deck kind of revolves around Tefnuit, if you don't see a Tefnuit, you probably lost anyway. So you might as well include Wingbeat of Giant Dragon. Summon Tefnuit. Um, things like bottom Bottomless is at one. Warnings at one. Uh. I think Mirror Force is probably going to be... Mirror Force, Torrential, Compulse, stuff like that is going to be more prevalent in the back row. Or... You can still... I mean, I guess there's Fate. Uh, but, like... I mean, I looked at a couple of Spellbook decks. A lot of it's, like... I guess they're chainable traps, but they aren't chainable, really good against a wing beat. Like, there's going to be like things like Seven Tools or MST. Like, just a lot of stuff in the back row that won't really get your Tefnuit off the field. So I would actually probably play Wingbeat of Giant Dragon because back row heavy decks are not good for things like this. Uh, it's not, like against Monarchs, back row heavy decks aren't really a problem because you kind of one for one your opponent. But a lot of things in here, they t that's two card investments and if your opponent can just compulse or bottomless your two card investment, that's really bad for you and eventually you're not going to have any cards and they're going to have all the cards and that's bad. So, yeah. Uh, the last thing I so... I think you should actually... I think if I rewrote this deck, I'd put Wingbeat in it now. I wrote this without much new format testing. Um, the last thing I want... Two things I want to talk about. Um, the one reason why I like this deck so much is it reminds me so much of Soul Control, which is like the first deck I ever did well with. Uh, I won't cry about that on here, but whatever. Um, secondly, probably the worst play that you can ever make is a John play. Okay, John is a friend of mine. We're good friends, and so I can make fun of him, because that's what friends do, apparently. Um, he makes the world's worst plays that always end up working out. Like, a, a John play is like cowboy in attack mode. Like, if you're if you, if you a cowboy in attack mode, you have no reason winning the game. But for some reason, every time John makes a John play, he ends up winning the game. Like, he'll go, like, minus 16 to, like, make a cowboy in attack mode, and then you'll lose because of it. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Um... Another John play, he's actually tributed thing. He tributes something for malicious in attack mode. That's a John play. Terrible idea, but ends up working out all the time. Um, and that's actually going to be something that you're probably going to do multiple times, well, at least once, playing this deck a couple of times. Summon Tefnuit, tribute Tefnuit for malicious, and then you can make a free rank six that way. I guess it does consume your normal summon, but you do get to put malicious in the graveyard, which is pretty good. I mean, the only way of doing that right now is discarding during end phase or uh, with Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, which is a phenomenal card, I guess, especially against something like Gears. So, uh, Gears actually isn't that bad of a matchup either. A lot of their... I mean, for game one, half of what they main is like OTK or anti prevention OTK. Like, they main two traps done, three seven tools, etc, etc. So... I mean, Summon Tef knew it, Wing Beat, destroy all their back rows. So, I mean, half the back rows are probably worthless anyway for you. I, I mean, there's Gear Accelerator and a Trap Stun back there, but whatever. And then, um, and then they try to go off. You do have Battle Fader and Gores. That just means you won't die, and they don't have a lot of... They can't really make something like a Strike Bouncer or a Gaios to negate your effects. So, I mean, that's one reason why Frogs didn't even have a terrible matchup against Chaos Dragons, because, like... What, do you, what is Chaos Dragons going to do? O-T-K-U? Yeah. Anyway, um, thank you for watching, if you're still here. You're probably not. Uh, under the Radar, uh, number four. Uh, under the Radar, Herotic Monar Monarchs, which is Article Aftermath, number four. Uh, I keep looking at my picture, and I... Yeah, I should probably... I can get a Fohawk back. I mean, kind of gay, but I like it as well. Anyway... Uh, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment on TCG Player or on here or message me on Facebook. I got really weird fan mail, fan mail the other day. I'm not sure if it was an insult or a compliment, but the guy, I, the guy, it was pretty clear the guy's first language was not English, so that was hard. To, I don't really know what he said. Something about my deck being so terrible it was good, and I was like, thanks. Um, but anyway, I'll uh, see you next time, possibly.